So moving on with my inexpensive photozine project, after having done the first one, uh, a collection of 12 pictures from my trip to Japan, uh, I wanted I wanted to uh, to process uh, a few more pictures from my collection in the same way because I, I like how the, the first one came out, uh, which I described in my, in my previous video. So. I was, I was going through, uh, through the pictures I've collected through many years and uh, I realized that most of the time I was shooting the film I ended up with a bunch of uh, film negatives still on, on, on uh, the rolls, not even cut up and some of them were already scanned into my computer uh, using my, my digital camera so I, I, I started looking at those and when I was going through them uh, I was looking at the way uh, to, again, to maybe uh, try to find a common theme or, or some way to uh, to make a, a, a more coherent and a uni unified collection. So I was going through this uh, pictures I was taking just recently uh, on film using my uh, Nikon N70, and uh, I realized that most of those pictures uh, were actually black and white. So I thought maybe that was that would be a good idea to, uh, to use that as a theme and uh, pick maybe 12, uh, 12 black and white pictures that I could uh, include in my, including my second, second edition of that uh, inexpensive policy. So when I was going through those pictures, uh, I already scanned on my computer and those that were still on film, I tried to select the ones I think that would kind of come together uh, fittingly in a fitting way and uh, would uh, offer a, uh, a pleasing uh, viewing experience. So I ended up uh, setting setting down and um, settling down on 12 pictures I've uh, uh, taken mostly on my recent trip up north. They were all black and white, taken, uh, shot and filmed using my Nikon N70 and uh, I, I also most of them I included a few pictures that I took earlier in, in the local area where I live. so that's one of them of, of, of the local colonial house from about uh, 150 years ago um, uh, this one is a more of a con conceptual photograph of a railroad track again uh, somewhere nearby where I live and those are from that trip up north. This is a uh, clock tower um, in one of those towns up, up north. And this is just uh, a bunch of uh, uh, poles bundled together with uh, steel cable. Uh, I think it makes for almost a conceptual uh, photograph. Right? So I decided to include that in, in the collection. This one is from 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 an island from the. Northern shore, northern shore of an island that I would visit on that trip up north and uh, I actually when I was looking at that picture and making the decision whether I wanted whether I would want to include it in the collection or not I remember that it was exactly after I had taken that picture that I managed to, uh, to damage my Nikon N70 uh, my reliable and beautiful Nikon N70 and uh, when I was uh, I actually ran through the roll of film, and that was the last picture on, on that on that roll. I wanted to, uh, to put in the new roll of film, uh, doing it on on the spot there inside, and the camera slipped out of my hand. I, I managed to wrap around my finger to the shutter curtain, so that rendered the camera unusable. Uh, so I'm trying to get another one, uh, hopefully a Nikon F100. But uh, in the meantime, I didn't have a good film camera, so. It's gonna make for a good memory as well uh, by including that picture in the collection. Um, so uh, uh, another picture is that of a uh, uh, signal light tower on, at, at the end of uh, at the tip of the uh, concrete way breaker in Lake Michigan, and that's that's another one that kind of goes along with the previous one because you can see the same signal tower and it's twin brother on the opposite side of the harbor so there is some 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 symmetry there if you, if you uh, 
and this one from is from from the local area uh, area where I live at, at the local state park. Uh, that, that one was, was taken in winter. But, uh, you can see that in the picture, of course. And that's this hole from from the same area, uh, a puppy pad, and that's the giant alley. I believe that's that's what it's called, and not just the base with twelve roses. Uh, taken a, a shot from from the top, right, right down from the top onto the base. So I think it's, it offers a, a different a different angle at, at you at looking at, at the um, at the bouquet of flowers. So I wanted to include, to include that one as well. So as previously uh, with the previous collection, I, I uh, found another uh, larger envelope and printed some information about. Uh, the black and white photography in general, just a few sentences, and then a little bit of description about the, the collection itself. Printed that on the face of the, of the envelope and put it in, in a cellophane pouch and uh, used the little sticker to hold the flap in place. Ran, ran, I ran the black string all around it, and that's the final product. And I'm pretty happy to see it again, having another. Uh, photos in, in done in that way it's, it's not expensive it's very easy to do and uh, again I printed all the pictures uh, at home on my um, Epson ET3750 printer in, in, in a black and white mode and I had some 5x7 uh, gloss, uh, glossy print paper from HP so I used that it was sitting in, in my shelf for a long time so I think that was that was a good a good way to use it eventually. I also included the, the index card as in the previous collection, just to give the uh, the audience some idea as to uh, where those pictures were coming from and what what's the idea behind them and what, what they are supposed to represent. So that was the second uh, uh, photo zine that I did in that way, and again I kind of like the process. I like the final product and. I think it, it's an easy to do a way to, to make your uh, photographs from your collection more presentable and uh, maybe uh, give them give them out to your friends or family members and uh, make them more presentable and more accessible to people. Uh, I, I have a lot of pleasure doing it and looking at those photographs now. And I have a nice product I can again you know, give it give it give someone. Uh, give it to someone as a, as a present or uh, maybe try to sell it online or eBay or elsewhere but at this point in time I'm working on another one I have uh, hundreds if not thousands of, of pictures most of them shot and film uh, some of them uh, on, on digital but it doesn't really matter you can do it the same way from, from the digital camera as well just print them uh, the same way and uh, uh, if you need some processing normally use the dark table which is the open source software when I scan in my uh, negatives I, I use that table to turn them into uh, positive uh, pictures and then do some some basic uh, editing just uh, exposure maybe and, and the white balance but not too much I, I, I like to to maintain the original maintain the original quality and character of, of the film photograph so I, I don't spend much time on uh, photo editing those, those pictures uh, but uh, yeah I think uh, you, you, you can you can come up with quite quite usable and quite pleasing effect using an open source software like Blackstable so I'm working on uh, the next collection now and uh, as soon as it's done there's going to be another video up on YouTube.